Hello, my name is Victoria Valenzuela, and I'm the Colorado FCCLA Vice President of Events. This video is in connection to the Colorado FCCLA's Road Trip Guide Pinterest Board that uses this year's Program of Work theme to give FCCLA members and their families the ability to strengthen their bond, live healthy lifestyles, and have fun on a budget. Tatiana Medina, the Vice President of National Programs, and I will be creating videos that address the guide's four focuses mapping out, discovering, bonding, and keeping on track. We've decided to create these videos in order to go more in depth and make it easy for anyone to embark on the journey of a lifetime. This video will give you a guide to Colorado Springs from a local perspective. Here are 10 must-see places and all the information you need to go. As a local to Colorado Springs, there are many places I love to go here. So I compiled a list of 10 of my favorite places for people visiting Colorado Springs to go. So I will give you basic information about the place and my experience there if I have one. And if you want more information, I will provide links to the websites in the down bar. So number one on my list is Pikes Peak, which is like pretty well known. Um, it's a very tall mountain. I don't have um, a lot of history about it, but there are ways for you to like experience the history of Pikes Peak in one of my options. So there's two ways that you can um, go to Pikes Peak, like the top um, of, at the peak. So you can either go by car, hiking, or biking, or you can go on the Cog Railway. So if you're going to drive, hike, or bike up Pikes Peak, um, times vary, so that's something to look at the website for, um, but the prices are, for adults, it's $12, and for children 6 to 15, it's $5, and a car load, 5 maximum, is $40. And so in order to determine maybe um, if you want to hike and um, bike up there, it's a 19-mile highway, so I think that if you really are outdoorsy and you've done long treks, then it's definitely something to consider because it would be an amazing experience. Um, like it's totally different than going up a car or even the Cog Railway because you know you're like walking or out in that air, it might be a little brisk so I'd suggest a jacket but it, that would be amazing to experience and I personally haven't done it but I know that um, it'd be enjoyable. So and then the Cog Railway is another option to get to the peak um, it is more expensive, but it's because it's a whole experience. You get to go on these like cool little like car things, and they like go up. It's it's really cool, and um, they give you like the history. And so, if you like to learn about the places you go to visit, um, I'm sure there will be information while you travel up Pikes Peak when you like if you drive when when you get to the top. But to like to have the whole interactive experience, the Cog Railway would be the way to go. And so, times vary also with the Cog Railway, but for adults in the summer, it's 38, and in the winter, 29. For children 3 to 12, it's $20.50 in the summer and $16.50 in the winter. There are coupons available for the Cog Railway, depending on when you come, so that's something to see on their website. And this is a very, like, sh it's a very short, um, like trip up there, it's only 8.9 uh, miles of track. And on your way up to Pikes Peak, there's many things that you can like see, um, not necessarily on the Cog Railway, but when you drive, hike, and bike. Um, they have a North Slope Recreation Center, Crystal Reservoir Gift Shop, Historical Glen Cove Inn, and the Summit House, which is at the peak, which you will visit on the Cog Railway, and you can have something delicious to eat. Number two on my list is Manatee Springs, Colorado. So Manatee Springs is a city kind of within um, Colorado Springs. So whenever I when I, whenever I describe Colorado Springs, I call it like a three for one. So when you visit Colorado Springs, you have Colorado Springs, and then within Colorado Springs, you have a little like city Manatee Springs and a little other city, old Colorado city. So like at one time they were separated and now they're just all lumped together in Colorado Springs. And they're like very interesting to go visit so that's why I made Manatee Springs my number two. Um, 
all it is is there's a, like a dollar per hour parking so it's not too expensive and they have like a variety of mini shops um, that vary from um, like there's a little Irish shop and there's like a penny arcade um, and then there's a whole bunch of like little restaurants that are like locally owned there's some like little um, places to experience local art um, and it's just really amazing to like see and then you really get a feel for the people that live in Colorado Springs and especially people in Manitou Springs because there's kind of different cultures within Colorado Springs depending on where you live like any other city but Manatee Springs in itself is like its own culture so it's amazing to be able to visit a place within a place there most of the shops do close at 6 p.m. Um, depending on the owner though some owners like to stay like past it depending on the day too if there's like an event sometimes they'll leave it open for longer and I believe maybe during the summer they like to um, leave it past longer because they know all the tourists come in. And then another thing within uh, Manitou Springs is there is like natural, like a natural mineral spring that runs through Manitou. And so there's different like places around Manitou where you can, there's like little water fountains type thing, but they're more, um, they're not like a metal water fountain. They're more like these like cement, like mosaic type um, pieces that sprout water, that spout water, and so um, it's really, a lot of people have tried it because they've heard about it when they um, inquire about Manatee Springs, and it is, it isn't like the best tasting for most, but some people do like the taste of it, and it's like all natural, and there's minerals in it, so it's good for you, so I definitely, I've tried it, and it's not that bad, plus just cool to say that you've tried it, you know, in Manatee Springs. Um, also, the Cog Railway is located in Manitou Springs, so if you do decide to visit Pikes Peak by Cog Railway, you'll go through Manitou Springs and just a little ways up, there'll be the Cog Railway, and so you can make that a whole day where you go to Manitou and then go to the Cog Railway to visit Pikes Peak. And then also, neck, right next to the Cog Railway, once you go a little bit past Manitou Springs, there is another place that um, people can visit and that people try to um, conquer um, all the time when they come to Colorado Springs or Manatee Springs, and it's the Manatee Incline. So it's free, but it used to be an old cable car track that now turned into like um, like a like steps. They changed it into steps, and it's open from dawn to dusk. And why people try, it's like an exercise, so why people try to conquer this is because it's, it's pretty challenging, it's only a mile, but in a mile it climbs 2,000 vertical feet. So it just like goes like straight up and you can even, when you go into Manitou Springs, you can see the climb like on the mountain. So it, it's pretty, it's a grueling task, but once you've like completed it, uh, there's just this kind of like success that you just feel like you like succeeded so much, which you have because it's pretty challenging. And I know that if you live in Colorado Springs, most likely you tried or wanted to try to um, climb to the top. Um, and then for when you park, when you go to visit the Manitou Incline specifically, they do have like a little parking um, lot right next to it for it right by the bar trail which is the trail you come down from the incline um, and I believe that that the prices are similar to Manitou Springs but if you want to like go from Manitou Springs and just walk up to the Manitou incline a lot of people do that plus it adds more to the exercise and then you still have to pay that dollar per hour type um, deal and then I suggest if you do do the incline because I have done that um, here's some pictures of me doing it with my best friend um, we were, I suggest that you'd come prepared because I, as a local, I feel like, you know, since you live there, you don't really, you don't take it as um, a place you're going, so you have to come prepared. So, of course, I didn't prepare, which was a mistake. I still made it to the top, but I suggest that you wear comfortable, breathable clothing, 
Um, you drink lots of water. Bring as much water as you can, but try not to like bring too much because that's going to make you know the climb even harder. But it's good to stay hydrated, especially then. And it it gets pretty hot most days in um, Colorado Springs, so I suggest that you um, can wear clothing that you can take off and take on and then water to stay hydrated. Also, I suggest a small snack because, you know, you're going to take multiple breaks. That's the best way to do it is when you go up, like go up as like a good chunk where you think that you're tired, but, um, that, but like enough that you think you need a break, but not too far because you want to strain yourself, like strain yourself. So then you can like take a like granola or something and then like eat that trail mix and then keep going up and then just continue that pattern. And then maybe even uplifting playlist because I know um, when I walked up the um, incline, there's people I met even. It's like a whole experience. It was great. You get to meet all the Colorado Springs people trying to do it or all the um, tourists that are trying it while they're there. And so you talk to them because you're all experiencing the same thing. And this one girl, the way she made it up, because um, she told me that she wasn't that active, um, is her music. And she, the whole time, even when she was talking to us, she was listening to it so that she made sure she, to keep com keep going. So, um, awesome place to visit. And then one last thing that's in Manitou Springs. Um, it's kind of like a local spot. Not a lot of people know about it. And it has two names, and when you look up the directions, it can be kind of difficult. So I will put, I'll put directions down below from me, so that if you do want to go visit there, you can just take the these directions, which make it very fast and easy to like get to, whereas the directions you look up are very difficult to understand. So it's called Graffiti Falls, or Rainbow Falls. It's free. Um, it's just like this little um, fall, like falls that are like underneath the road that's near um, Cape of the Winds. And so it's like this really nice little natural area that um, happened to be graffitied like a lot. Um, I don't know how it got started really, the history. You're not allowed to anymore, but there are people that do, and I do not suggest you should do that. But it's really cool to see, you know? It's like a different version of Colorado Springs, you know? Um, and it's it's safe like you can go during the day and stuff so it's and it's just like right after like Manitou Springs and just a teeny little area and when it's done and then you go back up the road and so a lot of people go in there you can like some people go in the water you know uh, it's not really dirty or like unnatural like people don't keep they keep it pretty clean um, the only thing is like beside like in, you know, in the dirt maybe there's a few things but it's actually a pretty clean place and it's really cool to visit and take pictures in front of some people even like climb the rocks which is pretty dangerous but it's like fun to go see and experience and it's interesting especially um, if you like to take photos or if you're going to take photos of your family it's, it's a great place to go third place on my list is Red Rock Canyon um, so we have a lot of natural wonders in Colorado Springs, especially when it comes to rock formations. And a lot of people know about the Garden of the Gods, but I don't think a lot of people know about Red Rock Canyon, which is another place to see all those beautiful rock formations. It's free. It's open from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. throughout the week. And what basically you can do is kind of what you can do in um, Garden of the Gods. You can walk around, you can hike, I think you can climb rocks if you're experienced. But you really just, you just embrace everything that Colorado has to offer. Um, it's just one of those kind of places that are nice to see whenever you go. When you plan a visit, you really want to experience that place. And Red Rock Canyon is like one of those things that you that any person visiting would want to go to and see. So I suggest that you go to Red Rock Canyon. Number four on my list is the Cave of the Winds. So the Cave of the Winds is how it sounds. It's a bunch of caves that offer a whole bunch of tours to go inside and explore um, by guide. So. I suggest whenever, if you are considering to go to the Cave of the Winds, to make online reservations, but you can, for the Lantern and Discovery Tour, you can purchase tickets um, when you arrive. So, but also, 
if you want to look at, you know, like the times and stuff, like that would be a good thing to visit on the website because they vary for different like tours and for um, different times of the day. They have like, I think every hour they have a, one that starts. So to see which one, like which tours go at which hour, I would go online. And then um, also prices vary depending on which one you um, want to go to and how old you are. So discovery tours are like the beginner kind of basic, um, just you're walking around in a cave and like um, people are telling you about everything that you're seeing. They're very family friendly tours for ages like zero to five. And then you have the lantern tour, which um, there is, you can't bring children zero to five in. So it's um, like six and up. And it's where you go into a cave and you go by like lantern light instead of artificial light like um, the discovery tours are. And then the last one is Caving 101, which is more of like a older and a more adult um, way to experience the caves. It's kind of like crawling and like, you know, going through, like, um, not necessarily just walking through. And so there is no, pe no like, people from 0 to 12 that can uh, do that tour. So I suggest, um, unless you have older, like, if you have older children, then, uh, or there's older members and their families, then I would definitely do Caving 101 because it's a different experience. But the other tours are very cool, too. Like, I did, um... The discovery tour when I was younger and I it was a lot of fun and just amazing to like see and then um, they also cave of the winds has a lot of activities in addition to going into the caves they are additional costs but they're really they're so like um, exciting so one of them is the batapult which is basically like a catapult um, like around like where Cave of the Winds is, is um, like a canyon type, there's like a canyon type place right like in like Cave of the Winds, like once you go in there, like up to the facility, then there is like, um, like natural like canyon, so like the Batapult is around that area, and then they have the Windwalker Challenge, which is basically a ropes course, and it's over kind of like like on the edge like near the goal like on um, the canyon and so it's not only like does it offer because if you've done a ropes course before of course they're in the air but they were they're never over like a canyon so it's like different and like um, a little scary if you don't like heights I probably wouldn't do it but um, if you want to conquer that fear then it's probably something that you'll want to try and then last that they offer is the um, pterodactyl which is this cool ride that goes that sweeps you into the canyon and so there's a video on the website that you can see so you can see what you're getting into if you do want to do the pterodactyl but I know a lot of people who have done it and I've seen their videos and it looks like a blast so if you do want to visit the Cave of the Winds I suggest that um, you you do their activities there. Um, and for more information, you can just visit their website. Number five on my list is the Manitou Cliff Dwellings. So the Manitou Cliff Dwellings is a historic museum that it offers a different experience because I'm sure that sometime, someplace, you went to a museum with your family and you, you learned all these this information and you looked at all these beautiful displays but at the Manitou Cliff Dwellings, it's different because you can, like, you can touch everything. You can go inside of the dwellings and experience history, like, as others experienced it. And so I think that that's an amazing thing that the Manitou Cliff Dwellings offer, opposed to a normal museum. Uh, but we do offer a whole bunch of museums in Colorado Springs and Denver that are amazing as well. But it's just an, an alternative to a normal one that you could go visit in where your local city is. So times vary, and but it is from Sunday to Saturday, 
Um, adults 12 and over are 950 to 950 plus tax and children 7 to 11 are 750 plus tax. Six and under are free and seniors 60 and up are 850 plus tax. Um, you are able to bring lunches so it, like that will reduce the cost of you know going out to eat and also they do have no parking fees which can some can sometimes be the things that like that money racks up after going to a whole bunch of places. So I definitely recommend going to the Manitou Cliff Dwellings. Number six on my list is Seven Falls. So Seven Falls is a very it's basically Seven Falls. It goes like like down a mountain and it just like goes like it interchanges like one two three four five six seven and so hours vary when going to Seven Falls. Um, adults 13 and up are $14 and children 12, 2 to 12 are $8. Um, there is no parking lot like right next to Seven Falls. You have to park at the East Broad in the Broadmoor East lot, which um, it's free parking. It's a little farther away and they offer trams that take you to Seven Falls. Um, so it shouldn't be, it's not too much like work. But you can walk to Seven Falls if you prefer. When you get into the Seven Falls Park, it is like 0.8 miles of like walking up to like the little um, to the Seven Falls. Um, it isn't too much, but it is kind of hilly and like a little windy. So take that into account. Um, something that's really awesome about it's it's going to Seven Falls is different than going to see any other falls. Um, that you may like visit on throughout Colorado Springs or even Colorado because you're you can you're able to climb like stairs that go right beside it almost like you sometimes even get splashed by the water you're so close and you also there's a set of staircase that goes like right across from it so you can view it from a high point and I think that that really offers something um, to anybody who like goes to Seven Falls and that's why you no know, people are willing to pay money and everything like that because it's totally different than just going to go see a waterfall um, like graffiti falls. Number seven on my list is the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo. So like any zoo they offer a variety of animals but the the draw to go into the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo is a location because it is in a very beautiful part of Colorado Springs it's a little hilly, but there's all like the nice rocks and like trees, and it's just a beautiful zoo. So that's why a lot of people are attracted to going to the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo when they visit Colorado Springs because just of how beautiful it is, on top of all the amazing animals that they offer. Hours vary depending on the season. Number eight on my list is Old Colorado City. So earlier in this video, I mentioned that. Um, Colorado Springs is a three for one. And so the other place is Old Colorado City. It's very similar to Manus Two Springs, but in a way it's totally different. So there are still the small shops, but closing times do vary. So I believe that you can stay in Old Colorado City a little longer. Um, and there's often, if you check on their website, they often have activities depending on the like which seasons are uh, it is. They have different awesome like activities that locals love to go do. Um, I know that um, most people won't plan their road trips around October, but in October they have like this cute like little festival and then they have all like the people who grow pumpkins bring like they have a pumpkin pop contest and the pumpkins are huge and amazing to see. They also have a lot of um, farmers markets in the summertime that would be awesome to visit. And so just depending on the season you come, um, I would definitely check out the events that they're having. And um, there is like meter pay on the, like, they don't utilize the same technology that Manatee Springs does. Um, they don't have those, because in Manatee Springs they have, where you pay the dollar per hour, they have those like electronic um, um, price meter things. And so those are all over the place there. But in Old Colorado City, which is very close to Manatee Springs, they only, they have like parking meters. And so I suggest if you want to park in in Old Colorado City that you park on like a side street with the meters and there's also parking lots kind of on like the streets beside 
on the main street that leads you into old Colorado City where you can park. And just old Colorado City is another, like like I said, a way to experience the culture in old Colorado Springs in old in Colorado Springs because um, there are also different people like just a, like a street down, like just down the street from Manitou Springs. It's totally different, and there's so many different. Um, like they have the same similar shops, but again, they're different. So I, it's a place that everyone likes to go on the weekends and you know take pictures of because it's so cute and quaint and they have coffee shops and so it's just another way to um, get a feel for where you are. Number nine on my list is Garden of the Gods. So I'm sure that if you've ever looked up a, a like wanted to go on a trip to Colorado Springs or even through Colorado Springs that you've seen or heard of Garden of the Gods. Um, it's an amazing uh, park that you can just visit. It's it's not a national park, but it is a national landmark. And so basically, we had a family in Colorado Springs who owned the like the land where Garden of the Gods, like that land where Garden of the Gods is, and then they donated it to Colorado Springs people so that it'd be free for anyone to visit throughout the years, which is remarkable because if you've seen. Garden of the Gods, or if you go see Garden of the Gods, I mean, it's it would be hard to give up that land, but such a treat that they did. So, like I said, Garden of the Gods is free. Um, the hours in the winter are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and in the summer, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, they also have, like, right across the street, like, you'll have to pass it to, like, go inside of Garden of the Gods. It's the Garden of the Gods Visitor Center, which offers a whole bunch of history about Garden of the Gods and, like, um, the terrain and all the animals that you can find within there. Um, it has been recently named the best free attraction in the USA by USA Today, so that's just a fun fact that's really awesome and, like, you know, proud to be... A, um, like Colorado Springs and then um, there's a lot of activities you can do within you can picnic you can hike um, a lot of people go there to take pictures um, there's like the most I think like one of the most beloved places is the Tilted Rock because there's this one rock formation um, that it's like this big boulder and then a teeny like there's like a small rock that like connects it to like the the rock below it and it's just like tilted so it looks like you know how is this rock like standing on its own and so people always go under it and like I'm holding it or they just like go on the top or on the ledge and it's perfect for family por portraits and um, very interesting because you know you don't see a lot of things like that um, they also offer not through the Garden of the Gods but you can there's just like companies um, that like partner and you can find on their website where you can do like park tours on like segways or in jeeps or you can um, rock climb and also I've, there's um, sometimes you can even horseback ride through there. Not like intense but more like you know just slowly going through and like looking at the scenery um, and embracing its beauty. Number 10 on my list is the Olympic Training Center. So the Olympic Training Center it, um, provide tours of their facilities, Hall of Fame, and um, their like Olympic store. And so you can sign up for tours on their website, and the hours vary depending on the time of year. Adults are $10, um, senior citizens 8, and children 5 to 12 are 6. 4 and under are free. So what's awesome about this is that, <laughs> I mean, there's not like Olympic training centers like everywhere. It's like Colorado Springs. So if you are a big fan of the Olympics or a big fan of USA or a big fan of sports, then it's so awesome to go and like stand and be where all those Olympians have been in the past. So I definitely suggest you go there. And it's really like a part of Colorado Springs. I mean, even when you go throughout Colorado Springs, there's one road if you take, um, I think like the highway, then um, you like drive past, like it's near the like Olympic Training Center, there is this like building that on the top has like this mural for like 
Olympians, and then it's like right next to the America, the beautiful park. So it's like you can go there, and then you can go see that beautiful, um, like, uh, statue that they created, which also can be fun to see because it like um, the America the Beautiful Park right next to the Olympic Training Center has like um, in like the summertime like it will like spout water and then kids can like run around and like through it so that's really fun to do with their kids too but I really um, recommend going to the Olympic Training Center. I promise that each of these places will not disappoint. I highly recommend you visit their websites for more information. For more things to do in Colorado Springs, I suggest visiting visitcos.com and don't forget about our road trip guide Pinterest board. There are pins about free activities in Colorado Springs and Denver and hopefully more places to come. Also, stay in tune with Colorado FCCLA by checking out our website, liking us on Facebook, and following us on Twitter and Instagram.